Hey everyone and uh, welcome to today's tutorial where we're going to be making this cool fluid-like animation within Blender. And uh, yeah, I got the inspiration from an, a, a studio, a famous studio called Found Studio, where they did this sort of effect as I'm showing now, um, where they sort of made this whiskey-like liquid for a, yeah, for a whiskey brand, I think it was. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to replicate that in in, um, in Blender and to use the meta balls um, and to show you that this is not only an abstract simulation that you can make and make beautiful, but it's also something that big studios have actually been used. I don't think they used Blender for it, but uh, the same effect uh, you can easily achieve within Blender. So. I just wanted to show you how to do it in Blender and uh, yeah, let's get straight to it. So this is the scene. Um, right now, this is not from the thumbnail, but it's just the shading I did when I uh, did a, a re-recording of this tutorial here. But I figured it would be easier if I just did it along with you guys and figure out the settings along the way. So I'm actually just going to delete everything and uh, yeah now I can see that we have this scene I'm just going to save it let's just get straight to it so first of all we are going to use the particle system for this one here and we're going to be using the meta balls as objects so first of all we're going to be needing a, a something that the particles or the meta balls can emit from so I'm just going to be adding a simple plane and uh, this plane, I'm going to add a particle system to. And uh, if I just go back here and uh, go to the first view here. And now you can see when I hit play, the particles just falling down. Let me just go out of this view here. They are just falling down. So we need, first of all, to get them to go up in the air. And uh, for this, we are going to be using a force field. So I'm going to be using a wind force field. Um, so I'm just going to be scaling this one up, just like this. It's scaled. And then we're going in here again. And I'm actually also just going to dial it down a bit beneath it here. It's the uh, scale. And I can probably turn up the strength a bit. And it's scale here. Just like this. Uh, maybe five will do. I don't know. We will have to try our way with this one. Uh, nope. Maybe I can turn down the flow, actually. We'll give it some more, some more air. <laughs> we'll hit scale and let's see if this one works. Yeah, looks pretty fine now. Um, perfect. And it's stopping here, and you might think, why why does that? I think it's because I added a, or maybe it's the lifetime, actually. But let us just move this one down here. Let's see, this still holds up. Yes, it holds up fine. And I set the flow to zero just so that it has the same kind of um, yeah, speed along the way. Um, so, yeah. And... Uh, I'll duplicate this one here and move it up, up here. And uh, I'll remove this one and add a collider a collision instead. And and I'll do this, as you will see now, when these ones come up. Uh, oh yeah, let me just go to the particle system and let's do the settings here first. First of all, I only want like 100 for the number. The frame class would be zero, the end. Let's just set it to 50 and the lifetime just more than the um, actual uh, end up here. So now I should go all the way up. And as you can see here, our particles are flying uh, all the way up and just hitting this one here. <laughs> and this is actually kind, kind of a cool thing going on. But we want to have these particles to be killed when they hit this plane. So they do not uh, add to the render time of our uh, scene itself. So I'm just going under the collision properties here. And uh, I'm going to click kill particles. And as you will see now, when our particles hit the plane up here, 
they should just be killed. So this just makes the animation run way smoother and yeah, just looks really nice. Um, we should also add a turbulence just to get some variation within our scene here. Um, and I'm just going to move this one up to the sort of middle here and uh, going to turn it to line instead here and just scaling it up and hit scale. And now we should see our particles behaving more in this turbulence kind of way, just giving it a bit more randomness and more realism. And you will see later how this will work. We should probably make this one larger now as the uh, particles are going further away. But this is our scene for now, and I think it looks actually quite cool. So now we are going to be adding our meter balls to this one. So under here, instead of mesh, we can choose the meter ball down here, and I'll just you can also try out with these uh, meter balls here. But I'm just going to choose the ball, and I'm going to move it out to the side here, and just probably scaled way down just like this and under the settings here we can choose a resolution to 0 0.05 or something and um, the lower this is the higher detail the meter ball itself is and then i'm got just going back to the um, uh, particle here and under the uh, render uh, settings here instead of a halo i'm going to choose the object and uh, as the object, I'm just going to be choosing the meter balls. And when I hit play here, you probably can see them in here, uh, but they are way, way too small. So I'm just going to be dialing this one up here and let's see what happens. Uh, oh yeah, nothing happened. <laughs> just 0 0.1, 0 0.25. Ah oh, yeah, now it's getting bigger, 0 0.5. Let's try this one. So now you can see that we have actually, um, yeah, we have our meter bolts and they are, you can see when they're colliding, they're kind of emerge, merging together or going away from each other or, yeah, this is the, this is the, the kind of effect that we are going after. Let me just click this one off. But I think we can do a little better than this. So first of all, I'm just going to be taking a plane and just rotate it here on the x-axis the y-axis and then just move it back just so we have a background for our scene here and um, what else can we do we can also i think they are all the same size so we can under the render we can you know change the the scale of this one here we can also add this one up here just like this maybe like this just so that they have uh, some sort of random scale to them so when we hit play now you can see that more more of them are emerging or like going apart from each other uh, and i think this is really nice um no i would like that they were close uh, closer together so i actually think i'm going to scale down our plane here to 0 0.5 hit scale and let's see the effect that we get now. Now they're even closer together. And as you can see, we sort of already have the effect that we wanna, uh, that we wanted to have. So I can also scale this one up even further. Make this one down. Make this one. It's all about experimenting uh, with this scale and size of your razor balls to get the desired effect that you want. But um, but this is this is basically the effect itself, and as you can see here, we have a lot of meter balls merging with each other or just going in their own kind of direction, and it just looks really, um, yeah, really realistic and and solid the way that things are simulated with the particle system here. So this is actually all that we have to do. Um, Maybe also, I don't know if this will affect the, oh yeah, the gravity. <laughs> when I turn the gravity down, they're moving way more quicker. You can experiment with the, um, I think the weight of the meter balls and then the gravity just to have some sort of 
a, you know, slower effect going on. And you could also export this in like 60 frames per second and slow it down afterwards or, or whatever you find uh, to be easiest. Um, I would just suggest, you know, maybe dial this one down. Let's see, down to eight and scale. Maybe that was just... Maybe that was just just uh, low enough. Oh, we had how much like ten effects this setting here, but yeah, you gotta do what works for you. And sometimes Blender just acts weird, and I can't explain all of the uh, physics going on within the engine itself. So you just had to experiment, but as an artist, you, you will find a way to get your result. So let's just do a quick shading for this one. Uh, what I did for the thumbnail, I think was I took the meter ball and I just, I actually applied a kind of like a gold material to this one here. Uh, but for now, I think we can just, just do a metallic, uh, maybe I'll just go with the silver metallic take down the roughness a bit here and uh, yeah and you can you can add some lists you know it's a let's add a bump and maybe a Voronoi uh, texture uh, right now I'm just I'm just playing around uh, with these settings uh, one zero five two one zero zero five just to get some sort of you know cool and interesting sort of effect I want to have this one even more with even more resolution in meter folds um, maybe going to render view you can see here we have the silver silver balls <laughs> and uh, I can take this one down now it has like a more metallic look um, maybe into the viewport here again and I will Maybe I'll just uh, a simple light here. Scale this one up. Uh, rotate it here. Maybe just going to be adding this from this side of it. Um, let me take down the spread of it. And let's just see what kind of effects we can get here. Um, from the surface, we have this one, this under 0.1. You can see we can get really cool and interesting dynamic um, lighting here. I'm just experimenting right now. Sorry if it's being a bit a bit slow and I'm not talking that much. It's just because I'm doing this just live as we are going. So I'm just also figuring out the settings along the way. As I'm showing it to you guys, um, something like this, I think, is, is kind of cool. Um, maybe I don't want that harsh of a shadow. We can bump this one up. Or maybe we can just do this one here. I actually just like the brighter look of it already. Um, I think for the background, <clears throat> a cool... <clears throat> Sorry, just going to take something to drink. Um from the, um, I don't know what's happening now, but from the, um, with the background here, I think we can, I think I just added another plane actually. Ah yeah, now I remember. Um, so I had this, cause I always see like big studios doing this effect here and I just really think it's it's cool. Um, I'll just make this another color here and you know, just do something like this, scale it up, scale this one over here, maybe even further down like this. Now we have sort of like a frame, which I think looks nice with our renders. And if you want the background to be even brighter, you can just take a, a light here. I'll just take a area light, scale the area light up and you know, rotate it so that it turns towards uh, our backdrop here. 
take our backdrop up. And as you can see here, now we can sort of just dial this light up here and we can get a brighter uh, backdrop. Um, just if we wanted it to be really bright and white, uh, we can we can do that. Maybe this one can go even further down than this one, like this. And you can do something cool, like taking the roughness down so that we get reflections in this frame here. You can also, you know, go with a, a brighter color, like red or that would be cool, or just a green here. I like the green. And uh, yeah, you know, dial this one down a bit if you want more. Maybe not that saturated. Something like this. This is also a really cool look, I think. Um, not the gold one that I have as a thumbnail, I think, but this works also really nice, I think. So yeah, this is this is the uh, the f effect, and uh, yeah, just I uh, hope you got something out of it. I know it's quite simple, but just to illustrate that. This is actually something that I, uh, I saw with a uh, huge studio as um, like found studio um, doing this with a whiskey brain. So just to show you that it's all about the ideas and not about the tools. So um, yeah, go make some uh, fun and abstract animation with these meter balls. So um, see you for the next one. Bye.